across the city. <clears throat> um, I'd like to start with our rest stops update. Um, I know you've recently received an, an update from either John or Sarah, but um, we are slated to have the first site, uh, uh, a provider up and running the first site by December 1st. Uh, we are still hammering out the agreements, but we feel like we can do this pretty quickly. Um, as far as the order of sites, um, we're looking like the site just northwest of Garfield and Roosevelt would be the first site to open. Um, <clears throat> just because that is, is the most ready to be established. Um, the site in the southwest corner of the North Expressway will, is surrounded by county land and will require an easement, and we've begun moving forward with that process. Um, and it's not going to be, it's not about to be that time or long of a process. So. While we're moving on that, we would like to get rolling on the first site as quickly as possible. I've been in communication with our, the only two interested providers uh, that have come forward, and that's Community Support Shelters and uh, Nightingale. Um, we've been in consistent communication. We've done some tour, planning some site tours just to talk about logistics, as well as um, I've talked with Pat Lickie of County Health and um, arranging a meeting between the county and the service providers to talk about you know, potential health issues and policies they might want to set up at the rest stops. <coughs> Second piece is Opportunity Village. They just recently released their quarterly report and have so far um, had 21 people stay at the shelter. There's currently 16. Um, they've had five cycle through, three have transitioned out of homelessness two just weren't a good fit for the village. Um, there have been a few reported incidents. Um, I think there was a total of 17. Only one required police to, to respond, and, uh, and that was just for a removal of a person who wasn't happy with the situation there. Can you say again what how many are currently in the village? The 16. Um, and construction does continue. It's been, I wouldn't say a slow start, but a moderate pace start. There's a lot of work that has to be done there. Um, I know they are beginning work on more community facilities, such as a, a shower and uh, sanitation area, as well as the continued construction of individual units. Repeat what you said. Sorry. Can you repeat what you said about the sanitation area? Sorry, yeah, I, they're beginning. I don't know how far along they are, but um, one of the next phases is developing more of a community-style uh, sanitation, uh, personal hygiene building. Shower, so it's a shower, yeah, yeah, shower and bathroom, yeah. I'm trying to chart the well, hygiene facility. <laughs> <laughs> There's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been trying to be accurate and totally lost all this. <laughs> um, moving on next to car camping, we currently have 32 sites. Um, within those 32 sites, they hold 50 individual car camping spots. Uh, that's for either vehicles or concert huts or tents, and for a total of 70 people in the program. Of those 32 sites, six of the sites are uh, for concert huts, and that includes on those sites are 12 huts serving 13 people. We haven't seen any change uh, following the council's recent expansion from three to six spots, but we do intend uh, the, the flexibility would be good going forward in the future of the program and allows the potential for more sites. Regarding last winter's um, emergency programs, um, for the most part, all of the programs have spent their funds down. Uh, if you recall, St. Vincent de Paul had an expansion of the car camping program for $50,000. Um, also funded was an outreach and referral coordinator for $35,000 and uh, construction storage needs for $10,000. Shelter Care received $50,000 for security and rental deposit assistance, as well as $25,000 for um, to help match their emergency housing match grant. And uh, Looking Glass also received $70,000 for expansion of their youth shelter facilities. Um, in a recent conversation with Egan, uh, they're facing uh, well, they're entering the winter season. Um, yeah, definitely, and. Um, they're having some difficulties. One of their providers has leased up the space, um, so they're losing one of their sites this year. And, um, we had talked to the coordinator, Doug Bales, last week, and we'll be having a meeting with him. 
to further see what kind of role we might be able to play. If you recall, there was $25,000 last year earmarked for Egan that went unused, and there's potential to roll that in this year to assist with the site for any of their other needs for this season. A few other updates. Uh, Lindholm Station recently finished their remodeling. Um, if you recall, that used $189,000 in CDBG, Eugene CDBG funds. And, um, essentially doubled their capacity, doubled their seating area, and installed a commercial kitchen. Um, next up, basically November through April, we'll be embarking on our CDBG and home allocation process. Um, no word yet as to what to expect from the feds, and that's always an, an ongoing saga. So we're looking forward to get going in our process and setting up a, a method by which to, to allocate funds we don't yet have. Going forward, just a few items on the radar. Um, Lane County Human Services Commission will be uh, launching their continuum of care. Um, included in that will be their uh, poverty and homelessness uh, board. Um, they expect to have that up and running in July of 2014, but they'll shortly be releasing the position descriptions and beginning recruiting for that once they um, settle just a few more of their procedural items. Part of the talk today was to just kind of launch discussions of a potential policy framework for homelessness. We'll get more of that in a moment. And then following that, um, following a policy framework discussion, maybe more discussion um, with a potential local Eugene Committee on Homelessness as per Chris Pryor's uh, past proposal. So during the Opportunity Village discussion, um, staff had brought up a policy framework to council that was ideally allows council to, to set a framework for the goals related to homelessness um, and allows a more proactive approach rather than a reactive approach uh, to issues related to homelessness. It allows them to define their goals and to help frame future conversations related to homelessness. Um, on the board there, what I've done is, is we had a, a seven item framework in the past kind of find it down to some of the themes uh, of the last one, which included diversion, which could be thought of as uh, transitioning people away from homelessness or preventing homelessness. Uh, health, safety, and security, both for homeless and uh, everybody else in our community. Utilizing partnerships, both regionally and community-led partnerships, um, where the city might not even be the lead in those partnerships. And any other that the council may want to have further discussions. And we really wanted to use this just as an update, but also to kind of place it in your ear that we may be coming back and talking about a more comprehensive homelessness policy framework in the future. And um, I don't know, Jason, 